What's up? How are you? Before anyone says anything, yes, I do have fake eyelashes on. I thought I would try them today. I am uncertain of how I feel about them. And if you feel any negative way, keep it to yourself. Uh, there's something that I want to say before I go into the video. Ooh, I don't know. I feel weird not saying it. Uh, I've just been really stressed a lot lately. And every time it's time to film, I'm just so stressed that something happens or whatever. And I start uh, crying. So for the last few videos, you might've seen maybe I've been acting a little weird and it's just because I'm, I'm trying to stay on top of everything that I have to do. Sorry, there's just a, there's a, there's a lot going on right now. And I've always kept myself just the busiest person for, for what, I don't know. I also have autism, which makes a lot of things very difficult. I really don't want to cry. I really don't. I had an hour and a half to film this video, but then got into a conversation with someone that needed to happen. It just freaked me out more. So we're really just going, okay? We're really just going. And I'm telling you because I want to uh, just let everyone know if I'm being a weirdo. I don't want to be fake. I don't want to be fake here. You guys all know that I struggle with things. That's kind of like the whole uh, point. <laughs> I never want to hide anything and I never want to fake anything. I think that's not just for you guys, but also for me. I notice at least that when I'm not doing good in my videos, one of two things happen. Either I'm masking a lot or I'm just like completely burnt out. Either way, it's a noticeable change for me. And I just want to say that because this is something that uh, will probably be continuous for a bit. Then I'll be uh, really stressed for a bit. I think I need you guys to be gentle on me and I need to be gentle on myself right now too. And I just really want to still try and have fun. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's uh, part of my spiel. So uh, with that being said, hi, I'm Paige. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Sorry, I'm not doing good apparently. Maybe maybe it's not a film, a video time, but I just don't have any other time to film. Life hack, if you're wearing makeup and crying, just look down and then it just drips from your eyeballs onto the ground. Um, hello, I've actually decided against filming this right now because I can't stop crying and that's not super yummy. Um, however, due to time constraints, etc., I'm going to try to refilm this tonight. I'm hoping not to look too bad by the time tonight comes around. I have to go to work and do one of the other 80 jobs that I have. I have another deadline for another thing that I was going to do after I was done work tonight at 8 p.m. after I ate food and play with Mason, go home and showered, which, you know, from 9.30 p.m. until 1 in the morning, maybe I can do this other thing, but I'm actually uh, going to have to not do that right now or today because I have this to do, so I'm going to film this again later. Uh, hope I look okay, but sorry for the uh, drastic change in appearance if otherwise. Bye! Hi, it is later. If you're seeing this, it's because I kept that part in um, and that happened. This is what I look like now. I hope it- I wonder if it's uh, much of a difference. I'm leaving that part in because I want to be transparent and I don't think that there should be a problem with being upset and telling people. I also think it's a very interesting segue into what we're talking about. So I just wanted to ask you guys, did anyone see me crying and got like annoyed or mad? If you were feeling some kind of negative way, then perhaps you need to check your unconscious biases. And that is what we are here to do today is to go over pretty privilege. Oh my god, hi, also, I'm Paige Lael. Sorry, I gotta do the whole thing. If we've not met yet, then hi, nice to meet you. My name is Paige Lael. You may know me from TikTok. If you're not doing so already, feel free to check out my TikTok at Paige Lael and while you're at it, you can follow my Instagram with the same name. I am autistic and over here we talk about autism and stuff. And we have a pretty good time if I do say so myself. If you missed last week's video, which I will link up in the eye, hopefully, if I freaking remember editing page, please write this down. I spoke about my dating life and what dating is like as myself, also an autistic person. In that video, I also mentioned pretty privilege, but I didn't have anything to talk about it yet. Pretty privilege is one of those uh, social construct things that I love to dive into and have opinions about. And it just so happens that I, you know, have opinions. But I can't share my opinions on pretty privilege unless I, first of all, explain what it is to all of you guys if anyone's like, what the heck? Thank you very much to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. You ever been on the go train and you really need to use the Wi-Fi and so you go on there, ooh, public Wi-Fi, so exciting, yay. That awesome, yummy, free Wi-Fi can be a random person person that just created it and is pretending and impersonating a Wi-Fi. The host of that Wi-Fi has access to everything on your device. So when you go into your banking info and you type that in, 
He's got it. NordVPN can protect you from this because no matter if a connection is safe or not, your data is always encrypted. NordVPN hides your IP address, the address of your specific device. You get to choose from over 5,000 servers in 59 countries. There are some countries that have every single Harry Potter movie on Netflix, by the way. You can move yourself to that country and have access to everything that they have access to online. Threat protection automatically scans URLs and will block suspicious ones. It'll also check for malware anytime you download something so you don't download something that's going to bug up your computer. If you do not have a VPN then you are a silly goose and I'm nervous for you. Or you could go down and click the link down below and get yourself a VPN right now. Try it for 30 days and if you don't love it then you'll get your money back. All you gotta do is go to nordvpn.com slash page. Thank you so much NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. You're the best and I appreciate you so much NordVPN. Thank you for keeping me safe. Y'all get a VPN. It's, it's scary what these people be doing out here these days. The hackers, they know everything. Anyway, love you guys. Blah, back to the video. Blah. Pretty privilege, first of all, is a term that I didn't hear used until I was maybe 19. It was something I originally started seeing and hearing about on TikTok and it was actually in an interview that someone said, don't you think you benefit from pretty privilege? And I'm like, uh, that sounds like two words that both have a definition to me. So um, yeah. And I'm pretty sure that I said in an interview somewhere, you guys may be able to find it, pretty privilege doesn't exist. I redact that statement. I was a little baby, 19, uneducated, thing who never heard of pretty privilege before. Social constructs, although not adhered to by me, do still um, not tangibly exist, but they are a thing that is real. It's hard to, I'm autistic. Pretty privilege is basically like the name entails, the notion that pretty people get more opportunities and have an overall easier life and are more privileged because they are pretty as opposed to uh, less pretty counterparts. Makes sense, right? And I think that as a general idea, I'm sure a lot of us are like, yeah, like, well, I mean, have you seen a famous person? Anyone know who Kylie Jenner is? But actually, this is backed up by science. There's actually a whole field of study about this. It's called polchronomics. That is the, that is a, um, an area of study that people can go into. Just about beautiful people. Let's talk about pretty. What, what is beauty? Even as an autistic person, I recognize what society deems is beautiful and the, the beauty standards that most people hold. And even I can look at a crowd of people and uh, pick out the pretty ones. You know who the popular girls are. So not just can a lot of us point out these are things that likely make someone prettier, but we can also in a social setting see who are the pretty ones and also the social hierarchy of it. The social hierarchy of prettiness may be partially attributed to the halo effect which the halo effect in regard to pretty people is looking at a person and thinking they're pretty and therefore thinking that all of them is good. It's also known as the halo error because it's making inferences and judgments about a person based off their traits, generalizing it to the whole person, which is totally not true. Our society recognizes the pretty person who is pretty and we also recognize the privileges that come from being pretty. I was reading this article and the author said that everyone secretly or not so secretly hates the pretty girl. Here's what we've got right now scientifically and socially for the, the right now beauty standard. It's very uh, Eurocentric, not only in having white skin, but uh, European features. A specific body shape, skinny, but not too skinny with, uh, you know, curves, but skinny and young. And also things like facial symmetry and muscle mass and all of those things are also taken into account. This is the standard, at least over here in North America. Part of the reason as to why we find certain things or certain features prettier than others is due to our biology. There are certain features that are more desirable than others in regard to the genetic fitness of your offspring. And a lot of these uh, biological tendencies are very outdated. For example, women look for men with big firm butts. Men with big butt muscles mean that they be using their legs a lot and they do be running 
and potentially fast, probably faster than other guys who have uh, smaller, saggier butts. And so my guy with the big butt is going to outrun the lion. That means that my kids with him have a better chance of outrunning the lion. Genetically, I'm picking Buddy who's gonna give my kids the best chance to survive. There are certain features about a person that makes them seem more fertile and therefore more attractive. However, there are certain features about a person that may not attract you to them and want you to have a baby with them, but may make you feel a way in general. Having big eyes and a small nose is something that is extremely common in newborn babies. Newborn babies have humongous eyes that don't fit their heads and their heads need to grow into their eyes. Seeing adult humans with large eyes and small noses actually provokes a sense of, I need to protect this small cute thing. If we look at some uh, polchronomics studies, yes, we can further prove scientifically that pretty privilege does in fact exist and have an effect on society today. There's this guy, his name is Daniel Hammermish. And that guy is the godfather of the economic study of beauty. He said that beauty is scarce and that scarcity demands a price. In a 2006 Harvard study, it was seen that the more attractive you are, the more confident you are likely to be. The more confident you are, the higher your wages. Beautiful people are also seen as smarter, more capable, and it's found that beautiful people in the same study also have much better communication and social skills, which also increases wages. From Hammermish, handsome men receive about 13% more money than the same job, same situation, but an unattractive man, which actually, uh, it's slightly less for women. Also, did you know that beautiful people are much more likely to be recruited in a recession? And also, attractive real estate agents make 12% more annually than unattractive real estate agents. But just because someone appears smarter or better doesn't necessarily mean they are. A study was done with, which I think this is very funny, attractive and unattractive college women. How would that be? How, how do you do that? How does one classify this? I don't understand how this was done. They had them write a test in person and then also write a test online. And it was shown that in person, the pretty girls, uh, <laughs> It's so strange, got much higher marks, whereas online the pretty girls did not get higher marks and sometimes actually they got lower marks. The difference only being that the teacher didn't see the person who was writing the test. Which I basically wanted to include there to say, hey, let's get into the real, real good stuff here. Beautiful people may not be better than others, but why do we treat them as such? I wanted to personally talk about uh, pretty privilege because I believe that you can one, acknowledge the privileges that you've had, but also hate the disadvantages. I think that those both can coexist. So I guess, hi, this is me coming out as thinking of myself as a pretty person. And I would like to elaborate on this and how it has personally um, affected my life. First of all, is anyone feeling a way that I just said that I'm pretty, called myself pretty, or think that I'm pretty, that a lot of people do feel a way about that. As a pretty person, I'm saying it guys, as a pretty person, being pretty um, obviously has some advantages, I'm sure. I was researching advantages of being pretty and all of the stuff there that I saw, I don't think any of them actually uh, pertain to me. For example, you get bought drinks. No, no one buys me drinks anywhere. What are other things that are good? Oh, I will say that I'm sure a lot of, lot less people would watch me online if I didn't look the way I do. I mean, we can't prove otherwise, but there are definitely advantages to being a beautiful person. And I'm not denying those, but allow me to uh, complain. I think that if I looked different, my entire life would be different. I think that I would have got help so much sooner and struggled for a lot less time if I were less attractive. The general consensus is I'm pretty sure that everyone hates me because of how I look. And also I'm pretty sure that everyone thinks that I'm doing great because of how I look my whole life. And so that has led to a lot of neglect. While I was looking up some things of like benefits of being pretty, I saw people hold the door open more for you. You get more help in stores. And I wanna say that personally, Absolutely not. I hold the door open for people. Can't remember the last time someone held the door open for me. And I actually, it's a, it's a thing. No one 
ever comes up to me when I'm in a store and asks if I need help. I remember I was standing in Pandora, which in Pandora, you need someone to come get you. And I'm standing there, girls are looking at me, I'm smiling at them, like, help me. The store was a little busy though, so they're going around and I'm like, okay, they're busy, no worries. Randomly, a friend comes in that I know from like home. It was a guy and he's like, I'm here with my sister. And we talked for 10 seconds and then a girl came over, excuse me, can I help you with anything? And I told him before, I said, man, I've been standing here for so long and I don't know what to do, no one's helping me and I don't wanna be rude and like call out. And then this girl, who looked at me 85 times, comes over to us, can I help you with anything? Looking right at him. And he's like, uh, she's been here this whole time, maybe help her. And she's like, oh, uh, do you need help? And I'm like, yeah, what do you think? I work here and I can just climb over the counter? At Pandora, you literally need someone to do everything for you. It's still a thing to this day. I will walk into stores and people will not help me at all which actually when I was younger, I really enjoyed because I don't wanna to talk to anybody. And because I am autistic and socially anxious, if I actually need help, I'm not gonna ask you. I'm not gonna come, excuse me, ma'am, excuse me. No, because 99 times out of 100, it's a pretty girl who turns around and she goes, yeah, it's right over here. Girls are very mean to me. <laughs> girls don't like me, especially girls when they first meet me. Strangers at the store, don't like me. And 99 times out of 100, once someone actually hears one word that comes out of my mouth or one opinion, they're like, oh wow, everything I thought about you is actually wrong because, oh, oopsies, I just thought all my judgments were true. Oh, and I'm finding out right now that I'm wrong and I actually need to know something about a person uh, before I can get an accurate depiction of who they are. Uh, it bothers me, for sure. Anytime I'm going a place new or meeting new people, I'm like, are there girls there? They're not gonna like me. And they don't, they never do. So I just wanted to talk about that because that is a huge factor of my life. It influences every part of me. Maybe I have like a resting bitch face. I don't have a resting bitch face. I don't, I look like a toddler. I, I had a girl once who messaged me. Hmm, <laughs> I wonder if she's watching this. If she is, enjoy. I'm gonna chirp you for a second. She messaged me and said that I dated her ex-boyfriend. She said that, you know, she hated me as an ex does usually for the new girl. Totally get it. She hated me because I was so pretty and looked like I had everything so good. Um, halo effect. Uh. And I've never talked to this girl before. And she continues to say, well, now you're autistic. Now you're openly autistic, just out and about, just being autistic. And now I realize that I was wrong about you. You aren't perfect. You know what? I'm no longer jealous of you. So there's that. <laughs> I was so fucking shocked that someone really thought that those words were good to tell another human. I'm editing, but I forgot about this one time where someone was getting into a Facebook fight or something and I inserted myself and I was commenting on behalf of trying to explain, I think. I commented on this person's Facebook thing. I don't even really remember what it was. But someone commented back because Facebook fight. And it was a girl that I knew of. She said something along the lines of, what do you know? You're beautiful. It's not like you've had a problem a day in your life. Something like, you're pretty, you have no problems because you're pretty. And I'll never forget so someone that I know commented back. Did you just, and then they commented again, did you just say that about Paige? <laughs> Let's look at pretty privilege with dating. If you want more about that ish, check out my last video where I talk all about dating and what it's like for me. But specifically, I think that what I wanna talk about is the attraction of people, mostly men. Men in general are so terrifying. The amount of, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. I'm not gonna go into detail, but I'm saying it. The amount of times that I have been sexually assaulted is, um, it's, tr it's tremendous. It's actually insane. The cat calling since I was well before a preteen as a kid, like just how different adults would treat me. People following me home. It's really gross, you know, it's really not fun. I do find it interesting that people suspect so much about me just by the way I look because I really like it when they're wrong in a way that they didn't expect and it's better for me. I'm not gonna go into details, but there was one time where um, someone chose me as the one that they were going to assault that night, not knowing in my five foot four little blonde kid frame that I can and will fuck a bitch up. And I did, I beat him up. So that was nice at least. Pretty privilege put me in a very weird spot in my school life. Throughout my life in general, everyone has really thought that I'm fine 
and therefore don't worry about her Paige is fine look she's beautiful she's fine it's a very common theme with my family and my parents with my teachers but also with students i recall one time on this youtube channel talking about how hard school was for me and someone commented and i have no idea who they are and they said i knew you in high school actually i think they said that we were friends in high school and they said that i'm completely lying and bullshitting i had a great fabulous time i was so popular and instantly i blocked them because first of all i have two friends from high school but i will tell you that i don't think one friend that I had in high school would describe me like that. I don't know many people actually that know me that would describe me like that. But here's where I think part of it comes from is pretty privilege. There are a lot of expectations that people have on pretty people and pretty people are punished for not exceeding those expectations. For example, pretty people will get less tips often. And also a lot of times that something bad happens to a pretty person, people go, well, you deserve it. Or, oh my God, you're overreacting. Blah. People get mad when pretty people have problems because they go, well, you're pretty, who fucking, what, what problems do you have? I'm autistic and ha please stop. <laughs> so in high school, I was almost pushed by the other pretty people to try to be a pretty person. The little cheerleader effect, they're like, let's all get together because we're all pretty and we all, we can all look at each other's faces all day. And I just didn't work there. I didn't hang out with the popular kids or the pretty kids. And then I also didn't hang out with anyone else because no one else wanted to hang out with me. Mm -hmm. There was one girl who, from grade nine, and she instantly like hated me and she would tell people. And I hadn't even said one word to her. And she said, no, nah, it's just it's who you are. Just how I look. Which I guess, what else can you expect from 14 year old girls? But it still happens uh, today. My looks were like the only thing that people cared about. And it was the, th my looks are the, th Thing that I don't think I use that much. I don't know. People liking me or using me only for my looks uh, feels really dumb and shit and not fair. I have so much more to offer and I want to. How I look doesn't even feel like it's part of anything about me at all. The idea of pretty is messed up. This is incredibly racist. It is sexist. It is fat phobic. It's gross. I do think that socially we are doing a better job of being more inclusive of different people. I think that's one thing that we could be improving on as a society is publicizing less beautiful people. I think that the idea is making things normal. I think that's where we need to head is we need a, a redefinition of beautiful and uh, or we should just just kind of like scrap it all and uh, not worry about it. And I think it's important that we're all looking at ourselves and uh, in what ways are we projecting onto others. Anyway, my phone's gonna die and I have a billion other things to do. So I actually need to scoot Magoo. Bye, I love you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Thank you for learning. You're the best. And I will see you friggin' later, my dude. So have a good day. This is the end of the video song. This video is to tell you the video's done. If you're hearing this, it's because the video's done. Go watch another one. Boop, boop. Have a good day. Love you so much. Bye.